Normally, when you set an animation to loop, it will reset to its starting position, which doesn't look very good. But by using a trick called animation looping, you can make it look way smoother. This can be used for making idle animations, dance animations, and getting more out of animations in general. Alright, so the first thing you want to do is go to the slack bot to do your animations on. I'll make mine big, so you can see the animations clearly. You can choose whatever costume you want, so I'm just setting it to my costume. Then set the animation style to slack boy, because the default slack bot has this annoying squeaking sound. Then set the emotion to neutral, because if you have any animations with facial expressions, they won't mix with the emotion. Then take out a character animation tweaker and choose an animation. Your first thought might be to go all the way down to the bottom to slack by miscellaneous where all the interesting animations are. But for my first example, I'm going into grab and hang. Now these animations, you might never think of going here. These might look completely useless to you, but for some of these, if you slow them down, it actually looks like he's stretching. Right here, it looks like he's stretching by touching his toes. You know, because he's an athlete wearing a nice t-shirt. No, this isn't sponsored. But you could actually make this play forwards and backwards to make it look better. And you could do that by using a timer. So connect the timer to itself. Set it to forwards backwards and invert it. For now, just set it to one second. So if you connect it to the animation tweaker set to positional, the animation will play forwards and backwards like the timer. You'll notice that it's doing this weird twitching thing, we could actually fix that. The reason that it does that is because it resets to the end. Like its arms are going down right now, but then they'll quickly go up. To fix this, we need to find the time point where it does that and stop it before that point. So it looks to be 0.27, so we want to stop it at 0.26 before it starts to reset. A lot of the animations do this, so make sure to trim the end time. To slow it down, you can increase the timer. So now, he's moving slower. And then to make it go fast, decrease the timer. 0 0.1 is way too fast. 0 0.3 is the fastest that I will set my animations. But I'm going to set this one to 1 1.5. You could do the same thing with other animations, so I'll show you another basic example. Oh, and another thing, when you're choosing animations, you can't see them play when it's set to positional, so just set it to start stop for now. So when you're choosing animations, set it to start stop, but when you're adjusting it, set it to positional. Like before, we have to find where the animation actually ends, since it's not to the starting position. Alright, so that looks to be 0 0.26, because after that, it starts to reset. Those are just basic examples but there are some situations where you want to trim the beginning and the end. I'm going to use an animation in the miscellaneous section to show you that. It's going to be like an angry animation, like a bully threatening a kid. So we can set this to positional, and of course trim the end time. So I'm going to stop it before the point where it starts to go backwards. See right here, his hands are coming together, but after that, it looks like they're going backwards. I'll set the end time before that, so there's no switching. Right now, it looks fine. If anything, I need to speed it up. But I don't like that his hands go back to his side. I want his arms to stay bent a little. So I'm going to remember the number 33. And then, I'm just going to go up from 0. I'm going to start it at around 20. It looks more threatening when his arms are already bent. And also, he keeps the menacing look on his face. So the start time is 15, and the end time is 33. See, like it looks more threatening when his arms don't go all the way down. You can speed it up and slow it down. But I'm just going to copy and paste it to show you another example. So let's say you want it to look like he's pounding his fist. So again, you have to set it to start stop to actually see the animations. And then we can switch it back to positional. We want to set it at the point where his hand is over the other. So 0 0.30 looks good. And 37 is the point where his hands are touching. So now it looks like he's pounding his fist like he's about to steal your lunch or something. There might be situations where you want to choose a specific part of an animation. So I like making dance animations. 
What I like to do is use a walking animation and just cut out a certain part. So I chose the strutting animation. It doesn't really look like dancing right now. But if I set it to positional and cut out the part I wanted, so I wanted to start right here when his leg is in. And I wanted to end here when his leg is out. If I loop that forwards and backwards and speed it up a bit, it will look like he's dancing. So that's a good way to make animations. Just choose the part you want. So you could choose any start and end time to have it loop between those two points, and it will play forwards and backwards. Another situation where you want to trim the start and end time to make a new animation is to make an animation more fluid. So for example, I'm going to set it back to start stop so you can see the animation I'm choosing. So I set it to exit door. I want it to make it look like he's hopping forwards and backwards. So as always, you want to adjust the end time so it isn't going backwards randomly like here. So it does that at around 94. So we're going to set it to 93. Now this looks fine, obviously we gotta slow it down. It looks alright, but I don't like how he lingers at each spot after he lands. So I'm going to trim it, so that when his feet touch the ground, he launches. So instead of 0, the start time is going to be as soon as his feet lift off. That seems to be 30. And then, I'm going to have it end as soon as his feet touch the ground, so that seems to be 63. And make sure it's at positional. I'm going to increase the time a bit. So now it just looks way more fluid. There are some animations that look a bit funny when they're looped. So this one looks like he's dying, but then brings himself back to life and then chokes himself again. So you might think this is funny, but you could actually do something useful with this animation. So it's called Into Gas Death. It's in the Sackboy Core section. What you could do with this is set it to around 1.18. If you change this time, it looks like his leg is moving. So to create some life, so it doesn't look like he's completely dead, I just loop it between those two points. 1.18 and 1.26. Creating small movements is a good way to give your sackbots more life, so they're not completely still. Right here, I looped the end of the animation, but you could also do the same thing for the beginning. A situation where you wouldn't want to loop animations is if you have an animation where a sack boy or part of his body is rotating. Make sure to set it to start stop so you can actually see it playing. This one called Out of Death Fire Stun, you don't necessarily need to loop it. If you do, it will look a bit funny. So if I were to loop this one and I'll slow it down, it looks like he's trying to spin in a circle. If I want him to spin without changing direction, it's better to do it without the timer and just change the start and end time. So I'm going to find out when the start and end time look the same. I already figured out that it's 0.10, so it looks like this. And at 0.20, it looks similar. So I just have it set at these times. And now as you notice, the timer isn't connected, and I left it at start stop. I actually like this one better than the other one, because he's spinning around a complete circle instead of turning around. It's really personal preference, but use your own judgement. You don't have to use a timer to loop every animation. Like this one looks better even if it does have a small fidget. You might want to put one of these animations on the player. The way you do that is by using a broadcast chip. And you want to set it to all in range so all the players in your level could use it. Then you want to set it to infinite range so it works everywhere in your level. Set it to 16 layers so it works for all the layers in your level. So what you could do is drag any animation you want onto here. Your sackboy will do that animation. If you want it to be controlled by the press of a button, you can place a control nader. It's not going to be visible in play mode, it's just so we can detect which button is being pressed. In order to do that, we need to set it to receiver, and control the binary is player. And then you can just wire the L1 button to the animation, but to do that, you have to place this in a microchip. That way, we can turn the entire thing on and off. You could choose any button you want, I chose L1. The way it's set up right now, you have to hold the L1 button. But if you want it to be something you could toggle on and off, you could use a toggle. That's the easiest way to do it. You could also use a two port selector, but using a toggle is definitely the easiest way to do it if you're just trying to do something real quick. So right now, I could press L1 without holding it, and I could press it again to stop it. 
If you're making a movie, you could activate the animation by connecting a battery. So you would stretch it out with the left stick. This would run for 2 seconds because 1 second per strip. And then you would just connect the battery to the animation. And I'll just copy and paste the battery and connect it to the second animation. So now I should play the animations in the movie. You would probably want a separate animation to prevent him from sitting down. So I just added another battery and connected it to the animation tweaker set to the idle pulse. I added sounds to my animation. If you want to learn how to do this, I have a video on that. 